All right, come on. I can't believe we got to do this again, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's hope the sound comes out on this one. Down. Yes. Good boy. Good boy, Patton. Good. Yes. That's a good boy. Who's that? Who are you staring? Don't be so nosy. You're like an old, old neighbor lady. Come here. Good. Good boy. Out. Yes. Good job, pal. Come on. Let's go. Very nice. Good. Oh, don't go under my legs. Oh. Out. Yes. Good boy. Good boy, Patton. Good. Good job. Very nice. Why are you always laying on the string? Out. Yes. That's a good boy. I know you're tired and it's hot. Oh, out. Yes. Good boy. Come on, Patton. Good job, pal. Good job. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Who's that good boy? Out. Yes. See, short little throws. I'll explain what we're working on here in a minute. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Good boy, Patton. Let me see. Come here. Oh, all right. Good. Good. Good job. Good. Yes. God. Good boy. Oh. Oh. All right, Patton. Out. Yes. You see the e-collar was on the ground there. So I can still get him a little fired up and keep him in drive and he'll out. He's doing very, very well. Very well. Good. Good job, buddy. Good. Where's where to go? Where to go? Patent out. Very good. Down. Good. Yes. Very nice, Patton. That makes me happy, buddy. Alright, let's explain to these nice folks what we're doing here. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. Hopefully you can see me now that I look at the angle. I don't even know if we were in camera. All right, Pat. Out. Good boy, pal. That's very good. That's very good. Come here. Down. Ah, beautiful. Yes. Very nice. That makes me happy. All right. You can take a rest. Come here. All right, guys, let me explain to you what we're doing. This sucks. I'm so angry about this. I just did like a 17 minute long video a few minutes ago and it came out really good. It's exactly what I wanted to do. When I checked the sound, there was no sound there. I'm hoping the sound works now. Um, this is our second session. Well, third, really, because the last one failed. But you guys have seen a lot of videos with Patton, okay? He's an absolutely beautiful dog bred by Terry McCormick. Thank you, Terry. You've done a beautiful job. I love this dog. His temperament is top-notch. Beautiful. I could trust him around a baby. And yet his drive is really great. Great. He came here without an out. Okay. He's not going to out for nothing. All right. So if I get a dog as a puppy, very easy to teach a very good out. I'll never understand someone who teaches a dog to tug or bite and doesn't teach a good out. So it's very important for me that my dog's out very, very well. Patton isn't going to out, plain and simple. So when I first started introducing the command to out, I used a little bit of leash pressure on a flat collar. And when he didn't have a leash on, my hand under the collar with a little bit of pressure on the leash collar. That's not going to cut it though, okay? I have to do better. The beautiful thing about proper e-collar work, and I say proper, is because when folks saw me just now with an e-collar in my hand, a huge segment of the population is gonna think I asked the dog to out and he doesn't, and then I hammer him. Couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, it's complete opposite, all right? So because Patton understands the system of how we teach the e-collar right now, he's becoming very literate. He's almost here two weeks and doing wonderful. So in fact, it's complete opposite. Now, 
today about an hour ago was our first session doing this and it went so well I said damn I should have filmed that so I waited about a half hour did another session and it went beautifully that's the one that you guys you know I could post it but the sound is off the microphone wasn't working so instead of asking him to out and then correcting him with the e-collar when he doesn't out that's not what I do now because he knows the system he's still on his regular working low levels now I implement the e-collar before I give the command then I ask him to out when he spits the toy out because he understands the stimulation and he understands the command now the stimulation goes away and he gets rewarded with the ball all over again that simple okay super super effective and that's why when you saw me put the e-collar in my pocket or it was on the ground now it doesn't matter because in our third session in the past hour that quickly he's going to be learning he's going to be getting it I want to be able to play ball with him or I want his owners to be able to play ball with him and that's why the long line is here because up until yesterday if you throw a ball he's not coming back with it or if he does he's gonna run around and he's gonna hold on to it so you see how short the sessions are the the throws like a couple feet away and then I'll start expanding on that and going further and further and further to where his out will be automatic within a couple of days and I'll be able to throw the ball as far as I want and he's going to come back because now the game is enjoyable and he understands it okay so as trainers we have to do better educating the masses of the everyday dog owners and young dog trainers about what the capabilities of the e-collar is when used correctly unfortunately the mass population still only believes it's used as punishment and corrections. And that's why I've tried to show so much with Pat and along the way to show it in a new light and make people think. So if I could change the mind of one person in these videos, I'm happy. I, I've succeeded. It's gone better than that. And I've had a ton of responses from people that have been completely against the tool. And just because of what we've done with this dog, they're like, okay, I'm on board. I totally get it. All right. But let me explain this to you. I have no issue with purely positive trainers if that's the route you want to take that's fine but a purely positive trainer has no chance in hell in teaching this dog how to out and that's coming from someone who teaches just about everything with positive reinforcement right but there has to be more you can't bribe him with food you can't teach him with food that toy drive and that prey drive is so strong that's not going to cut it at the same time the people who slap on the e-collar ask the dog to out and then nail him on super high levels till he spits it out <laughs> again completely ineffective you're going to create a ton of conflict a ton of chaos and completely destroy the dog to where the dog's not going to want to play anymore you know and so when we find that middle ground to where the dog understands that system of negative reinforcement with positive reinforcement I don't even like using those terms I don't use science and learning term I'm not into it you know but I'm trying to explain to people so when people who don't understand what we're talking about here negative reinforcement it sounds bad let me break it down simple negative reinforcement used in leash terms okay for you young folks who don't get it or your regular dog owners who truly are curious but don't understand so when we talk about negative reinforcement let's use the leash let's say the dog's at the end of the leash and he doesn't know how to come to us when we call him if we start applying straight line very light leash pressure when I say straight line I mean parallel to the ground light light pressure we're not yanking the dog we're not pulling just very light pressure the second he turns and takes a step towards us that pressure goes away that's negative reinforcement we're removing that pressure at the same time that's also a positive to the dog because he wins he betters his situation on his own and then on top of that a beautiful reward follows usually food in this case it's the toy so the negative reinforcement is we apply the low level stimulation to the e-collar which he understands now let me stress that don't put an e-collar on a dog and try to do this you'll fail but he understands it so we apply the low level e-collar pressure we ask him to out he spits it out the low level e-collar pressure goes away okay he betters his situation and then on top of that the reward comes again what he really wants at this moment the toy the ball so it's a very positive association for the dog and he learns very very easily and now 
you know, we've been doing this an hour. So the first session was 10, 15 minutes. The second session that I filmed for you guys, maybe I'll still post it, I don't know. Because what was funny at the end of that, when I came to turn the camera off, and I showed you guys in the last video, he dropped the ball at my feet like, hey, let's keep playing. And that's what we want, guys. We want to build the dog up. We don't want to suppress the dog. And so I'm just trying to show as many people as possible the capabilities of this tool, okay? If I would have fought with this dog or tried to teach this dog a really good solid out with all the other methods that are out there, you're going to create a ton of chaos, a ton of conflict. But because he understands this language now, it becomes a really positive experience for the dog. It's that simple. I hope the sound is coming out because I'll lose my mind if it's not. The last video was definitely better, but like I said, the microphone didn't work. I don't know why. That's why I hate the technical stuff. What do you think, Patton? He's going to be tired. It's hot. Dude, you're a good boy, Patton. You really are. But I love this dog. You know, I'm so, I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky to be able to get to work with a dog like this. He makes me look good. Let's, let's, he, he just does because he's a great dog. Again, he was bred by Terry McCormick. And, uh, you know, his owners are very lucky to have this dog. But I'm using him to show the masses on the capabilities, what we could do with this tool when it's in the right hands. And I didn't create anything new. I'm not the world's greatest trainer. I didn't create my own system. I just took things from people that are far better than me in the past and made it my own and used my big mouth to get it out there. Like, look guys, look what we could do to help these dogs. And I've been very successful in changing a lot of minds because of that, okay? You get people all the time, how do I teach my dog to out? He won't out, he won't bring the ball back. Well, not a lot of people show that stuff. They just don't. And so people are left confused or they try really harsh tactics that don't work well and they, they just sever the relationship with the dog. Me, I build the relationship. Where is he at right now with this ball? Okay, because we have a great relationship. I mean, we have a great relationship because this dog is here to learn. It's my job to teach him, not to suppress him. We have enough of that crap out there, guys. Okay, so I'm teaching him the out. It's going to be very solid. This is day one, okay? Our third session should have been our second, but like I said, the microphone failed. By tomorrow, the next day, the latest, guys, it's going to be, and you saw, that's why I put the e-collar in my pocket. I don't know if that was the last video of this video or when it was on the ground. I still ask him to out and I play a little tug and get him fired out and he's already starting to spit it out very quickly. I've never had to punish or correct it. Now, with that being said, guys, as he starts to understand it well now and he understands the e-collar, again, I'm rambling on, but it's so important. I can't stress this enough. Now, if I ask him to out without the negative reinforcement, without the utilization of the e-collar, if I ask him to out and all of a sudden he decides, no, this is too much fun, at that moment, then I can tap the e-collar, still on the same level, I won't have to raise it, he's going to spit it out. And then I can say yes and reward him, okay? These dogs are going to learn properly, but at the same time, we're going to build up their attitudes and their demeanors. And dogs don't lie, you see what he's been like through this. I'm trying to show as much of the training as possible, even though a lot of it is very mundane, very basic, very simple, very dry, but it's important be because we don't see enough of it out there. And there's a lot of people, everyday dog owners, millions of dog owners out there that I think sometimes as dog trainers, we don't focus on enough. We want to show each other, hey, look what I could do. And you only want to show the good stuff. No one learns from that, guys. Nobody learns from that. And if we're going to save our rights to train as we want with the tools we want you have to appeal to the masses the millions of everyday dog owners just like the very anti-tool purely positive community does they appeal to the masses because it sounds nice and it sounds pretty and it sounds like unicorn farts and rainbows and all that good stuff and and, and again i have nothing against purely positive trainers i totally if that's how you choose to train that's fine it's most of what i do but there has to be more. It's not complete training. Just like the folks with the yank and crank. I've talked to several trainers this week that have witnessed brutality with dogs. They're the bigger scumbags. I don't think purely positive people are scumbags. I just think you're ill-informed and not educated enough to understand the capabilities. Anyone who's harming a dog physically or mentally, I got nothing for you except an evil hatred that 
there's nothing bad enough that can come to you as far as I'm concerned. But that's my mentality. I love big and I hate big, okay? And trainers, people can hate me. No dog ever will. I can guarantee you that. No dog ever will. I'm going to do my best that I can to teach this guy as much as I can in the three weeks that he's here. But that three weeks is just the beginning. I'll continue to work with him off and on, you know, probably for the next year to make it done right, you know, and, and, and make his owners very happy with their choice in me and make his breeder very happy with his choice in me. It's important to me. But hopefully, again, if I could change one mind that's anti-e-collar, then I've done my job, you know? What do you think, buddy? I think I've rambled on enough. Oh, baby Jesus, please, I hope this sound came out because if not, I'm not doing it again. And I'm going to be really angry. The last video was better. I was really, really happy with it. And very rarely do I make a video where I say, man, that was good. I'm happy. But he made me so happy. He made me so proud. I was like, we got to show everyone this. Right, pal? We're going to take you in and get a drink now. I love this dog. I love you, bro. I love you, Bubba. I love you, Bubba. You're a good boy. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, he's all worked up. Mango's in heat, and all three boys are walking around with boners. I know the feeling. I really do. All right, guys, thanks for listening to me ramble, but I'm just trying to show the stuff that a lot of people don't get to see out there, okay? I hope it's effective. I hope I'm doing my job. Thanks, guys.